Welcome to GatsbyConf 2021. I hope you're enjoying the conference so far. My name is Patrick Sullivan, and I'm a senior product manager on the Gatsby Core team. Along with the rest of the Gatsby Core team, we focus on improvements to the Gatsby open source framework. This means spending a significant amount of our time collaborating with our open source community in a variety of forums. Now, it's been a long time since Gatsby version 2. We've grown quite a bit with our user community since then. We've heard all of the great things that you love about Gatsby, and we've heard some of the things that you don't love. Well, today we're going to take you through a brief tour of some incredible enhancements to the developer experience that improves your workflow as a professional front-end developer, as well as a resulting site for your clients and visitors. So let's start by zooming out. Why do front-end developers love Gatsby? The resulting websites are fast, secure, and employ best practices for accessibility and SEO. Gatsby is built on popular proven technologies like React and GraphQL, allowing you to use the technologies that you enjoy and that are very well supported by enormous communities. Speaking of GraphQL, Gatsby includes a unified method for accessing content across your various data sources. You don't need to master the APIs for all of the different content sources you may wish to integrate into your website. Content is content is content. Once you know how to interact with the Gatsby data layer, which is based on GraphQL, you're good to go. The Gatsby ecosystem provides a vast array of plugins that, as we hear from all of you, addresses nearly everything you need in order to rapidly go from concept to live. It's a wonderful thing when you as a front-end developer can focus on using the tools and tech you love while connecting seamlessly to the various content sources that your content editors love. Gatsby is honored to have an incredible, ever-growing open source community that continues to help us improve the experience and capabilities within the framework. Speaking of our open source community, as you can see here, in 2020 alone, we merged more than 2,000 pull requests from over 1,000 community members, and this excludes anyone employed by Gatsby in 2020, spanning more than 60 countries. This is a project with an amazing community, and we absolutely enjoy working with our contributors. From a pure adoption standpoint, we can continue to see an uptick in use across a number of facets. As you can see here, more sites, more downloads, and more GitHub love. All that said, there's always room to improve. And we've heard about a number of struggles that our users faced when using Gatsby. As a front-end developer, you want to be able to start your development session quickly and see your changes quickly. You also want your site rebuilds to be fast. We know that first builds, also known as cold starts, may require more waiting. However, when I make a small change, I should have a small wait. Creating pages from data required lower level API access and repetitive boilerplate code. And we had that awful worked on my dev server situation. There's little that's quite as frustrating as seeing your project working well on your development server, only to have errors happen when you go to build the site. Lastly, it was hard to determine what the specific contents were in a particular version of Gatsby. It was equally difficult to determine whether you should adopt the latest version or wait a couple days for the next version. Well, we felt your pain, and we've been focused on delivering an even better experience for those building with Gatsby. With that, I'm excited to usher in a return to happiness for the professional front-end developer, brought to you by Gatsby version 3. It's my pleasure to now turn this over to Leonard Jorgens, who is a senior software engineer on the Gatsby core team. Leonard will take you through a brief tour of some key features of Gatsby version 3. Leonard, all yours. Thank you, Patrick. Hello, everybody. My name is Leonard and I'm a senior software engineer at Gatsby and I work on open source. And today I want to give you a demo of all the new features we have in version 3 for you. For this demo I built a Gatsby starter which you can also use after the talk for your project 
and it is powered by our new Shopify plugin and uses also the new image plugin, which you have both seen in previous sessions. As an overview, it will have the index page you see on my right here already, and then a product overview, individual pages, and so on and so on. I'm already running the local development server here, and the first cool new feature I want to show off is query on demand. Um, as the name suggests, it only outputs and create pages on demand. So if I hover over this link here, you already see in the terminal that it has run a page query. And if I click on the link here now, it also lazily generates images. So the short version of it is your local development experience got so much better now because you don't generate any uh, pages up front and the uh, images, you only generate them on demand, which can save uh, a lot of time for your local development server. Again, if I hover over this product here in my bottom left, you see the terminal output and that re really relates to all um, pages you have on your page. In case the query takes a, a lot of time, you will also see a loading indicator and uh, this way you will be informed about it. The second new uh, cool new feature I want to show off is the file system route API. So in the past, uh, for this individual uh, product page to be created, you would have uh, called the create pages API and Gatsby node, then create your uh, products in this case, call the create page action and manually uh, created the path, passed the template, and uh, passed some values via context. All this logic here now can be encapsulated in the file name of the uh, individual page. So if we look at this URL here in more detail, it's products, shirt, and then the handle of the product. And if we go into the source pages folder, which you are familiar with, you can see that we have products as a folder name, then inside curly braces Shopify product, which is the GraphQL type, you would also have create for a dot product type because shirt is the product type. And then in nested inside this folder, you have a file with the name shopifyproduct.handle. And this template gets past the ID of this individual product. So as uh, you are used to, you can do uh, queries only specific for this product. So since we get the ID and the product type automatically passed in, we can um, only get the data back for the product we want. So the title, description, and so on and so on. And since we also get a product type here, we can use them for the, uh, for the more products category. So since we have shirts and stickers, we only want to see uh, shirts here. Another cool feature that is currently behind the flag is the uh, dev SSR. If you haven't seen yet, uh, we shipped a while back the feature for flags inside Gatsby config. And this way you can quickly activate and deactivate experiments we currently run. So dev SSR or SSR in development is currently behind the flag because it's still experimental but I already want to show off uh, what it will do. 
So if we go to our index page here, which will be this one, and we um, want to access something on the will window element, we will in the, the normal development experience won't see an error because uh, before this flag, the development server didn't run any SSR. So while that rebuilds, we will see, hey, we have localhost 8000 here. But if I refresh the page now, it will run SSR and we will be greeted with an error because window element isn't accessible uh, during server-side rendering. So uh, you, uh, we will have to guard against it, like checking for the existence of this element here. I will remove this error here now because we want the site to be built again, of course. And if you want to help us shape this feature, because it, as I said, it's still experimental, you can activate the flag inside your Gatsby config and please let us know uh, what hiccups you will see. Last but not least, I want to show off incremental builds in Gatsby open source. I'm running Gatsby Surf on my local computer here to surf up the build artifacts of the page. And what I want to show off is changing the title and after the description of this product and see how and uh, which pages are generated. So I will change the title here and in the meantime while it builds I will explain what we expect to see. So I'm running Gatsby build here and lock out all the pages that are built and what we expect to see is that this page here gets rebuilt because here it has the title, then of course the individual page and also related shared product pages because they all have um, the more products uh, category inside. And since we have so little products uh, on all pages, those are. And as we can see in the output here, we have our expected um, result. The products page gets created, the shirt one, and if we refresh we also have the uh, title change here. Now let's change the description. And rebuild again. And now we only should see the individual page we created and all other pages um, are left alone. All this optimization is really helpful if you keep the cache around. So if you do warm builds, um, for cold builds, it will still do the whole build upfront but we highly recommend keeping the cache around. And as we see, we have our hello world here and we also see the updated page inside um, yeah, the build log. And that was the demo. I hope you enjoyed seeing all these new features and I can't wait to see what you build with Gatsby V3. Um, off to Patrick now again. Thanks, Leonard. Now, remember I mentioned that one of the pain points was also that it was difficult historically to determine what was in a particular version of Gatsby. It was additionally difficult to determine whether you should upgrade or wait due to the unpredictable cadence of updates. Well, we introduced some changes to our release operations last fall to address this. We now publish minor versions every two weeks along with top-notch release notes. Now you know exactly what's in a given release and when the next release can be anticipated. Hint, hint, every two weeks. As you can see, 
we've improved some key areas of the developer experience, both within and around the actual framework. With faster local developer workflows, faster rebuilds, simplified page creation, clear, consistent release cadence, and alignment between the develop and build experiences, working with Gatsby has never been better. Now, during this session, we made mention of a number of features that are discussed and demonstrated in detail in these other Gatsby Conf sessions. In case you missed the related session seen on this slide, I highly recommend that you watch them later on. Now, there's still much to do, and we're already working on the next big things. Now, undoubtedly, there are capabilities you were hoping to see in version three, but didn't. Let us know what those are and why those matter. There will be a survey at the conclusion of this session where you can share your voice and influence the future of Gatsby. Let your voice be heard. Now, I'm sure you're excited to get building with Gatsby version three, and I'm happy to announce that it's available today on NPM for you to use. We also have a migration guide for those of you currently using Gatsby version two, which you can find at the URL at the bottom of this slide. And with that, I'll say thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of GatsbyConf.